Well, good morning. This is Pastor Reggie Williams from Detroit, Michigan. I'm so elated to be on with you. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers that have tuned in. I uh, certainly want to give honor uh, to Pastor Beverly Powell for this opportunity. And uh, I just want to empower your life for the better this morning. Man, it's Father's Day. This is a, a, a day that uh, has been set aside to honor the fathers uh, that are in our life. Uh, I personally, my, my, my earthly father uh, is, is no longer with us, but uh, certainly I am so grateful to know um, that uh, his legacy still lives on and we honor his legacy. Uh, but ultimately, I honor the father. That's right. I honor God for his faithfulness uh, as the word of the Lord declares uh, uh, that he is a father, father to the father. It's glory to God. And he has definitely proven himself uh, to me. And so I want you to know how much I appreciate uh, being on with you and how much I am so elated uh, to just share and, and just to empower your life uh, for the better. Uh, listen, if you are a uh, biological father, uh, a mentor or a role model or big brother, or you've spoken fatherly wisdom into someone's life. I want you to know today that you are appreciated. That's right. You are appreciated. Uh, and uh, God is pleased of what you, you've been doing in the lives of God's people. And so uh, let this day be a day of rest, a day of reflection, a day that you can look at and say, God has been good to me. Um, I don't know if you have plans, but man, I'm telling you, uh, uh, whatever you do, just rest assured in knowing uh, that God is pleased with you in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Uh, I'm not going to be before you long this morning, uh, but I just want to give you a word. I believe it's going to change your life for the better. That's right. It's going to empower you for the better. And uh, um, I'm just asking that you would get your Bible and you would get your notepad. We're going to get right into the flow of this because uh, I want to deal with some things. I believe that's going to give you uh, uh, some momentum for the next uh, in your life. I'm telling you, man of God, it is not over. <laughs> that's right. It is not over. Um, as I begin to ponder uh, on this subject, I knew right away that God was speaking to my heart to give you something that will cause you to pro propel into the next level in every area of your life. Glory to God. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for another opportunity to minister to these, your sheep. I thank you, Father, that revelation knowledge will flow freely, unhindered by any satanic or demonic influence. Father, that you would Think through my mind that you will speak through my vocal cords, none of me and all of you. Holy Spirit, that you would arrest every individual with your love uh, as we are ministering uh, this morning to every father uh, that will encounter this moment. Uh, so we praise you. We thank you uh, that every person is anointed to hear your word. Hallelujah. And God, you have anointed me to preach your word. And this is the confidence that I have in you, Lord, this day. And I give you praise for it. And I declare that Satan is defeated in every area of our life. And Jesus is Lord. If you believe that, I want you to put in the comments, I believe. Amen. Come on, put that in your comments. Say, I believe. And I believe the moment you believe, God begins to show you another perspective of who he is. Oh, I sense the presence of God even now in Jesus' name. And so I want to talk to you. That's right. I want to talk to you uh, this morning, man of God. Uh, and of course, those that, uh, the women of God that are watching this morning, uh, you can definitely take some nuggets from this too, uh, because God is not a respecter of person, but he is a respecter of faith. Glory to God. Um, and so um, I want to talk about, I want to talk about to, uh, this this morning, uh, keep building. That's right. I want to talk about keep building. Uh, and as I began to uh, hear the Holy Spirit minister to my heart concerning this topic, um, um, uh, I came across uh, two individuals in the Word of God, uh, Nehemiah and Ezra. Those were two individuals that came across. Um, and um, they had an awesome task uh, 
Nehemiah, those that understand the story, of, uh, excuse me, the story of Nehemiah, uh, it's found in the book of Nehemiah. That's right in the Old Testament, uh, the first chapter, uh, I believe, all the way through the seventh chapter, and somewhere around the seventy-third verse, somewhere in there. Uh, but as I begin to, begin to reflect as it relates to the whole story, uh, Nehemiah had a passion uh, to rebuild the walls of uh, Jerusalem, and uh, he had a huge tax be task before him. Uh, in fact, when he saw uh, uh, how Jerusalem looked like and how it was in ruins, uh, the Bible says he began to weep. He began to pray. He began to seek God uh, concerning uh, what it was that he wanted to do. And I believe God began to seal the instructions and he began to cause Nehemiah uh, to, to even see the blueprint of how he was going to get it done. And God showed Nehemiah favor uh, in that region. Uh, and the Bible says that even uh, those that were in authority granted him access uh, to areas and provided protection for him. Oh, my God. Uh, to build again. To build again. I want you to put that in the comments uh, this morning and say it's time to build again. Listen, I wanted to share a little bit uh, with you and I, and I feel like I'm flowing right now. So if it seems like I'm all over the place, listen. Listen, don't get mad at me, please. Just take some notes because I believe this is hot off the press and uh, I don't want to stop the flow of the Holy Spirit. And so I don't want you as a man this morning uh, to, to, uh, to, to get lax concerning this day. Uh, I believe that uh, if you are alive and well and you are watching this right now, that God is causing you uh, to expand right where you are. Uh, he is causing you to see uh, the bigger picture. Uh, 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 to, to someone that's watching right now, this is not just another Father's Day. <laughs> uh, this, is, this is the moment uh, of expansion for you. This is the moment where the light is being turned on and it's causing you to see some things from another perspective. Yes, go ahead, enjoy the food. Go ahead, enjoy the gifts and all of those things that you deserve. That's right. Amen. It's 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 God's will that you will be blessed in this season. But 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 don't just limit yourself to that, man of God. Don't limit yourself to uh um just the gifts and the food this year. Uh, don't limit yourself with just watching the basketball game. Hey Amen. I'm I'm guilty. I'm I love basketball, but but don't limit yourself. Uh, to those things that are temporal. Mm. Because what God is saying in this season is that he wants you to build. <laughs> he wants you to continue building. Well, you may say, well, I'm not, I'm not building no building. What are you talking about? You might say, I'm not uh, 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 working on anything, you know, uh, you know, uh, special uh, right now, you know, maybe you're retired. Maybe you are, uh, 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 in a place where you just, you, you know, you've done enough work and, uh, uh, you just, you know, just doing what you like to do. And Hey, that's, that, that, that's great. But listen, listen, there is an assignment on your life. Oh my God. There is an assignment on your life to build for the kingdom of God. That's right. And what we're going to have to understand and learn in this season, that we, we need to gain the right perspective. Oh, God, we need to gain the right perspective that we're not just a man, <laughs> but we're God's man. And as long as you are in the earth, as long as you are breathing, <sighs> ah, come on, breathe. Hallelujah. As long as you are living, God is saying to you, continue to build. What are you talking about, man of God? Well, I'm going to tell you what I'm talking about. There are some there are some people uh, that that you are responsible for in this season. Uh, may it might be your children uh, and showing them the ropes, teaching them how to be an adult, teaching them how to be, uh, 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 um, you know, uh, a better citizen. Um, and uh, you're teaching them how to uh, uh, be responsible. You teach you. You are you're pouring wisdom into their life. Uh, God is saying, don't stop doing that. 
Because when you continue doing that, you are causing an effect to take place in other people's lives. Uh, you might be on a brink of a new business deal. Oh, come on, somebody. You might be on a brink of something um, that you've never, ever have done before. And God is saying, don't get lax because this thing is much more bigger than what you even can think or imagine. The Bible says, now unto him that's able to do exceedingly and abundantly above anything that we can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Listen, don't you uh, 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 dummy down uh, the plan or the vision or the idea that God is giving you. Some of you right now are sitting on some things that, that, that it seems minute, but to God is something big. And it is literally causing you to get to another place that you've never, ever been before. I'm telling you, don't stop building. Why? Because God wants to display his goodness in the earth in Jesus name. Oh, let's go to Romans. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody just type hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's go to Romans, the eighth chapter and the 19th verse. And it says as thus, it says, for the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation <laughs> of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not because of some intentional fault on its part, but by the will of him who is subject, who, who so subjected yet with hope. In other words, God created you. The world is waiting on you to manifest the very thing that God has placed in you. Watch this now so that God's goodness can be displayed in the earth. The nature, the creature, the cre uh, creation itself will be set free from its bondage to decay and corruption and gain an entrance into the glorious freedom of God's children. Listen, verse 22, it says, we know that the whole creation um, of irrational creatures has been moaning together in the pains of labor until now. Uh, I came across something, uh, was, I was studying something in regards to agriculture and um, uh, earthquakes. They tell you that there are many earthquakes that takes place in the earth on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, and uh, which really, really is parallel to what this scripture is basically saying. Uh, the whole world is moaning, it's groaning, it is literally uh, uh, earthquaking, if that's a word I want to use. Uh, and it's crying out for the sons of God to rise to the occasion. Oh man, listen, listen, don't, don't look at this day as another day just to relax. But look at this day to start something and continue building. Listen, get your notepad out. Begin. Listen, some of you have dream dreams. Some of you have dream visions. Some of you have, have, uh, uh, have dreamed to do some things that you have never done, that has never been done in your family lineage. And beloved, God is speaking to you in this season and he's saying, Build, keep building, keep, keep, keep moving in a direction that he is calling you to. Why? Because the world is waiting for you to do it. The earth is quaking. The earth is that the reason why those earthquakes are coming is because the world is crying out the manifestation of this. It crying out for the manifestation of the sons of God to come alive. Listen, when, 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 when we rise to the occasion in the earth, oh, glory to God. Everything else falls into alignment. Hallelujah. The Bible says that when the righteous are in authority, the land rejoices. Glory to God. When the righteous are in authority, the land rejoices. And I'm talking to you, righteous man of God, that God needs your body. He needs you in this season. Watch this now to step up to the plate. Uh, why? Because somebody is watching you. In fact, somebody is literally looking at you as if you are the only Bible that someone would ever see. Woo, Jesus. You got to understand 
that you are not living this life just to live. Somebody is watching every moment, everything you do in this season. They're watching how you come, how you go, how you dress, what you drive. Listen, somebody is measuring you. They are literally looking at you and saying, I want to be just like that. But that's why you have to make sure that in this season that you cannot just live just for you, but you got to live for someone else. Oh, glory to God. Why? Because they see something on your life that can that can that can literally change the person that's watching and they're changing even now in Jesus name. And so Nehemiah was on this wall. Uh, I found out some interesting things concerning Nehemiah. Nehemiah was so consistent. He was so consistent. Hear me when I say this. That it literally took him 52 days to complete this wall. Now, I'm not talking about it was just, just one slab of cement or it was just a slab of bricks. Let me give you some details of this wall. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Man, I'm telling you, I sense the presence of God. This was the length of the walls. As I, as I, as I actually uh, studied this, it says the length of the walls in that day that Nehemiah built was 4,018 meters, which is equivalent to, watch this now, 2,496 meters miles. Ooh. The average height on the on this wall was 12 meters. That is equivalent to 39.37 feet. And the average thickness of this wall was 2.5 meters, which was 8 feet two inches. I'll say it again. The walls, the length of the walls was 4,018 meters, which was equivalent to, uh, uh, let me, let me, let me, let me read, let me make sure I say this right. It was equivalent to not 2,000 miles. It was equivalent to 2.5 miles. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's still huge. The average height was 12 meters. Oh man. Which was equivalent to 39.37 feet. And the average thickness of this wall was 2.5 meters. In other words, it stood at eight feet, two inches. All right. You can look at that and kind of uh, uh, compare it to the height of a basketball room, which is 10 feet. So if, if you know that a basketball, basketball rim is 10 feet, the average basketball rim, imagine, imagine maybe a couple feet down, and that's about eight feet somewhere in there, two inches. It took him 52 days, beloved, because he was consistent with the very thing that God told him to do. Man. Man. It's amazing that we commit our way to so many things that we miss out on the things that God is telling us to do. If we would commit our works unto the Lord, can you imagine the things that we can do as men, as, as, the, as men of God? Oh, God, man, this, this thing, I mean, this thing rattled me. But don't think not one time that Nehemiah was not challenged. Yeah, he was challenged. There was a young man or there was a person by the name of Sam Ballot. <laughs> Sam Ballot has reference to the, the spirit of distraction. Woo, man. <laughs> Listen, don't be distracted in this season. The Bible says that while Nehemiah was building, Sam Ballot would come to try to stop him from building these walls. Sam Ballot was a representation. He was a, 
he was a representation of the spirit of distraction. And the Bible says that Nehemiah ignored him and he would not come down. Why? Because he continued, hallelujah, to build. Will you stop doing what God is telling you to do? Because someone else <laughs> wants you to stop? Or will you keep moving in the direction that God is telling you to go? Beloved, I'm telling you, as you can, as you stay focused and you do not allow the, the distractions of the enemy to stop you from doing what he's telling you to do, I'm telling you, you will, you will literally cause things to take place that has never happened before. Oh man, I sense the presence of the Lord. Don't allow the spirit of this. I don't know who I'm talking to, but don't allow the spirit of distraction to get you off focus from building. Man, I'm telling you, if you're not receiving this, I'm receiving from myself right now. I'm receiving because, you know, a lot of times as, as men of God, when we go forth and we preach, a lot of times it looks as if we're preaching to you. But let me let you in on a secret. <laughs> when we are preaching, we are literally preaching to ourselves. How can I come to you as a servant of God and preach something in an effective way or to teach something in an effective way and I've never experienced it myself? I'm telling you, <laughs> when you stay focused on the things of God and you do not allow the spirit of distraction to come Run, rush out. Listen, you cannot be distracted, excuse me, distracted in this season. Because if you are, somebody's life is dependent on you. I'm telling you, this is not just another Father's Day. But this is a day that you can literally begin again. Listen, I don't care what the enemy has tried to do. He has literally tried to one rush out of your house. He's tried to run rush out over your marriage. He's tried to cause you to, to be broke, broken down financially. Listen, listen, keep building. Don't allow the distractions of the enemy. I know the enemy has literally tried to come at you all kind of ways. He's, he's basically said that you were done for. He's basically said that you were never going to be. He's basically said that you would never, ever reach that goal. But I'm going to tell you something, beloved. We serve a God that if the weapon forms, hallelujah, it will not prosper. Glory to God. Listen, don't you allow the, the, the weapons of the warfare that are coming at you stop you from building. It's an illusion. The Bible says that although we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we should not fear. Why? Because the Lord is with us. And I'm telling you, there's been some things in my life that I've had to endure, some things that I didn't even know how I was going to get through. But I'm telling you as a testimony of God right now, I'm telling you as my own personal testimony that God has the ability to see you through. Listen, you do not have to stop. Keep moving in the direction. Listen, listen, I know, I know it seems like because you're at a certain age <laughs> that... <laughs> You know that it's it, it's over now. No, listen, listen. You're breathing. You're strong. Keep moving in a direction. This pandemic has literally caused people to be paralyzed in their faith in so many ways. But beloved, I want you to know that you can move in the direction that God is calling you to do. Listen. The reason why you can't sleep is because God is trying to get your attention. The reason why you can't you can't rest is because God is trying to get your attention, and He's telling you, beloved. To build. Yes, right. He's telling you to build. Keep building. Don't stop. Another thing I want to point out is that the walls were a were an essential part of per, of of keeping the enemy out. Oh man. It was it 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 was protection for the city. It was it was uh, uh, 
it was it was a boundary against those that were against it. Man. And I heard scripture, Proverbs 25, 28. It says that if a man does not have a control over his own spirit, he's like a city with no walls. <laughs> man. <laughs> Proverbs 25 and 28 says that a man that has no control over his own spirit is like a city with no walls. Let me tell you something, beloved. You have to keep building. Not only, not only the, the, the plan and the, the vision, but you have to keep building from a spiritual perspective. Why? Because that enemy is lurking. He's trying to find the cracks and crevices of your life. He's trying to he's trying to come in and he's trying to take advantage and he's trying to cause you to to be disconnected from God. He's trying to stop you from 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 praying. That's right. You listen, if you want your atmosphere to change in your home, start praying. You're the covering of the home, man of God. That's part of building. That's part of building. God saying if you continue to pray, he'll give you the blueprint. He'll give you the plan. Before you know it, your situation can change. You can't allow the spirit of distraction to stop you from getting to the appointed place. Hmm. I'm talking to you, man, man of God. I'm talking to you because there's a calling on your life. It may not be pulpit ministry. You may not be on a microphone before thousands of people. But God is calling you to a higher level and he wants you to keep building. That's right. Because the enemy has a plan. Mm -hmm. The enemy has a plan. The enemy says, John 10.10, 10, he says, the thief coming, but to kill, steal, and destroy. That's the plan of the enemy. He makes it very clear. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm not here to be your buddy. I'm not here <laughs> to make it easy for you. I'm here to kill, steal, and destroy. But God, he cancels out everything. He says, but I have come. Hallelujah that you may have life and that more abundantly to the full, to it overflows. It overflows. In other words, that's another passage of scripture says to the full, to it overflows. God is saying, I have come to bring you life. And beloved, if you get disconnected from me, you'll stop building and the enemy will come run rush eye all over everything that he's ordained God has ordained for you to do you don't have time in this season to be distracted don't come down and don't be distracted by the spirit of Sam Ballad that person that tries to keep pulling at you to get you off focus and get you to the destined destination beloved I'm, I'm out of time I wish I could go another 35, 40 minutes because there's so many more things that I want to say. Maybe I can come back at another time. Let this be the best Father's Day that you've ever encountered. And recognize, beloved, it is time for you to build again. If you don't know Jesus Christ and the departing of your sins, listen, he is the greatest investment that you ever have. I know you got investments and all of those things. Listen, you haven't had an investment like Jesus Christ. Listen, if this is the first time you've heard a message like this, listen, it's time to give your life to God. Nothing like it, beloved. Your life will be the better because of it. Stop chasing after the wind. Stop chasing after that alcohol. Stop chasing after those unsolicited relationships. Stop chasing after those things that gives you a false sense of hope. The 
Bible says that he that hungers and thirsts for righteousness shall be filled. Listen, I'm out of time. But if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you said that you have confessed with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God has raised his son, Jesus, from the dead. Listen, the Bible says you are now saved. I love you with the love of the Lord. Stay connected with this ministry. One of the greatest ministries on this side.